All right, so it's the last screencast for assignment one, and in this one, we're going to just look a little bit at one of the synchronization problems. So assignment one, you know, just divides into two parts. In the first part, you implement locks, condition variables, reader writer locks, and write a test for reader writer locks. In the second part, you implement use those primitives to solve two synchronization problems. There's this whale mating problem and a stoplight problem. Um, one important caveat here is that it is really important to get your synchronization primitives working, not only before you start the synchronization problems because you will struggle to solve the problems if you don't have working primitives, but also because the primitives get used throughout the rest of these assignments. So if your locks don't work, you will struggle mightily with assignment two and assignment three, and it is likely that you will not be able to complete those assignments without working locks and condition variables. Reader writer locks may be useful for those assignments. You will find places where they are potentially appropriate, but the most important part of this assignment is to complete your locks and condition variables correctly so that you can use them down the road. The nice thing about this, however, is that it's very easy to check whether or not those are correct. So once you've completed those, you know, if you have course staff to talk to, just show them those primitives and they should be able to verify very quickly uh, that they're correct because there's just not a huge amount of code to write for locks and condition variables. Reader writer locks, uh, you also can get help with, but again, they're just not as critical down the line. And the synchronization problems are by far the least important part of the assignment because this is code that won't even be included in your kernel in later assignments. You'll disable the sync probs option in the kernel configuration and you won't even have that code there. That said, hopefully these are fun, give you a chance to think a little bit about synchronization. So let's see how, how they work, um, because like the reader writer lock tests, uh, we haven't really given you useful testing code here. The testing code will, will do something. Uh, it'll start off threads that print things, but you kind of need to be able to process the output. So where does this code, let's start off, where does the code live? Uh, it lives in sync probs. So we've divided the, the code that you're going to write here into two sections. There's stuff that's in sync probs, and let's look at the way I made an example. And then there's test code for that in test sync probs.c. Now remember, we will overwrite all the contents of this file along with everything in testing and, and uh, select other files when we do our automated grading. So please, uh, you are welcome to modify the file. This, this comment is a little bit alarmist, um, but it will be overwritten. So we'll, we'll change the comment to make that a little bit more clear, um, but everything in here uh, is going to be uh, removed. So now, in order to remember the whale mating problem as described in the assignment, which I'll pull up here. Um, right, so we have the whale mating problem. And the idea here is that we are going to you have three types of thread. You have males, females, and matchmakers. And the males and females want to mate with each other, but they need a matchmaker to help them. So we're going to start our driver code over here is going to, if you look at the whale mating example here, it starts, um, goes through these three types of uh, thread. Uh, and mating, if I remember correctly, is um, we're animating. animating is 10. So we're going to start 10 male threads, 10 male female threads, and 10 matchmakers. And then each one of those threads, when it starts, is going to start its own uh, wrapper. It's going to start in its own wrapper function. So we have a male wrapper. Um, and the male wrapper really just calls male, which is the function that you need to write. Your function should call male start and male end. Male start when the male starts mating and male end when it finishes. And same thing, the, the code for the females and for the matchmakers is identical. So the code that you need to write over is, is over here. It's just really three functions, male, female, and matchmaker. And you wanna think about what's the invariant here that we would be able to test in this assignment. So for example, what should happen if we start up 10, let's say we start 10 female threads, what should happen? Then let's say we start 10 male threads. What should happen at that point? Now let's say we start one matchmaker. Now what should we see happen? Remember, the males and females, you need a trio of threads to all have been started and ready 
to for there to be a match. So if I started 10 females and then 10 matchmakers, still nothing is going to happen. And so this is really the, the good way to think about the problem. Um, clearly, you need some type of communication between the males, the females, and the matchmakers. This problem is, um, you know, because it requires this inter-thread communication, not a good fit for locks, which don't support that uh, very naturally. However, it is a, potentially a good fit for several of the other synchronization primitives that are designed to support communication between multiple threads. The code that we've given you um, when you call matchmaker, start a matchmaker, and will just print out the um, whale's type and ID. So this will print out, uh, you know, male and uh, maybe, you know, uh, you know print, it'll print off, let's see here, I think when we set the name of the thread, yeah, so we, we set the names of the thread down here to male thread, you know, male whale thread one, female whale thread one. So as this prints out, um, you know, that out, you'll have to look at that output very carefully to make sure that things are happening correctly. However, we would encourage you to write a better test case here that actually, um, you know, explore some of the corner cases I just discussed um, or process the output in a, in a more intuitive way. By looking at the output, you can verify that your solution is correct, but your eyes may start to hurt after a while. And it's certainly a case where you can write code in this, in this uh, file that uh, ensures that your code is correct. And we know this because we're going to do it. Um, so this is an example of how to approach one of the synchronization uh, problems. The test code that you write for this will also um, it'd be helpful for you to look at some of the other tests that we've written and to think about the test that you wrote for your reader writer locks. Um, that's all. Uh, good luck on assignment one. Um, this is the last screencast uh, and uh, hope you uh, may you write working synchronization primitives.